Hello! My name is Pei and today I'm going to show you how to handle a big snake all by yourself. After watching this guide, you'll be considered a professional snake catcher and have the privilege to brag about it to your friends and family. This particular reptile is called Zura and I think it's one of the most fun bosses to fight while having medium combat stats. Zora has a steep learning curve but the mechanics are really fun and once you figure out the gist of it, it can become pretty rewarding. I also just want to give a big shout out to the music in this area, it's absolutely beautiful. Zura has only one requirement and that's completion of the regicide quest. As far as the stats go, base 80 combat stats are perfectly fine. As long as you can equip a trident of the swamp and a toxic blowpipe, you're good to go. I'm going to show you the gear that I use, which doesn't necessarily mean it is the best gear that you could possibly have, rather a gear that I feel comfortable using and I had the most success with. We gotta remember that having fun is the first thing you should max out in this game. Bravo. Everything else just doesn't matter. Let's start off with the two most important pieces of gear when fighting Zulra. We're talking about a Serpentine Helm and the Ring of Suffering. When charged with Zulra scales, Surf Helm provides immunity to poison and venom. This is really really useful for the fight as it takes away the need to bring anti-venom potions and basically saves a slot in your inventory. The Ring of Suffering, however, needs to be charged with Rings of Recoil, which in return saves you from having to equip a new Ring of Recoil after every single boss run. You'll be doing most of your damage with magic. That's why we're camping a Major Arena 2 cape and an Occult Necklace as it is a huge damage boost to our setup. Rest of the gear consists of a prayer scroll, trident of the swamp, airroom set, malediction ward, barrels glows and boots of brimstone. For a ranged switch I use the toxic blowpipe with blessed dragon high chest and legs. The total value of the setup is around 28 mil which is I admit a bit pricey. However the setup has a lot of leeway and you can swap to a more budget gear easily. As you can see by excluding the serp helm and ring of suffering and also swapping airrooms to mystics you're saving 20 mil and to be honest you don't lose out on a lot of dps but rather the convenience which some of these items bring. As far as the inventory goes I was bringing two prayer restores, one ranging pot, a ring of dueling for fast access to hell pools and some combo food. Since toxic blowpipe is a two-handed weapon, you wanna leave one empty slot just so you can switch gear easily. This is what I mean. If you're using a rune light client, you definitely want to get the Zura plugin because this is how you keep track of phases during the boss fight. You also want to import the ground markers which are added into the video description below. This literally tells us where we need to stand in each one of our phases. If you don't have a rune light client, well, I guess you can download a picture of Zura phases and keep track of it on another screen. It's also important to know that once you die inside the boss area, you can get your items back either from death or from the priestess in Zulandra. As is tradition, I'm going to show you that dying in RuneScape is as normal as breathing. There's no way to learn until you go ahead and try and error the fight. Even if you learn every single step of a fight, the game will still find a way to punish you. As you can see here, I died quite a few times and it's clear that I was visibly confused with all the random shit that's happening on my screen. You have to switch pairs, avoid stuff on the floor, deal with snakelings, swap your gear, move accordingly and on top of that, keep track of Zulra phases in the Zulra plugin. To make things even more interesting, Zulra has a chance to hit you with a ranged attack which you cannot pray against which means that if you have bad RNG, you're done either way. So you gotta keep track of your health and try to stay topped all the way through. Before you go in, make sure that your Zulra our plugin is open, have a sip of your ranging potion and board the boat. Because we imported the ground markers, you're going to notice the yellow rectangles on the floor. Run to the northeasternmost tile and rotate your camera so it matches the plugin. If you don't want to rotate your camera, there's an option in the Zura plugin to change the orientation to your liking. I'm going to rewind this step just so I can show you a couple of actions you can incorporate while running to the tile. This is going to happen often because it's hard to show every single action that happened during a span of 5 seconds. Upon entering, you can turn on your magic damage boost and attack him while running to the tile. I also recommend using the long the textile, especially with the trident since it doesn't affect neither damage or speed. If we take a look at the Zulra plugin, we can notice a couple of different color dots as well as some prayer icons. If you don't see the prayer icons, turn them on in the Zulra plugin. As you can tell, we are currently in the green dot, no prayer phase, which means no prayer is required and Zulra is doing a special attack, just keep attacking him. Once the special phase ends, Zulra will descend and ascend back in one of the three forms, red or melee form. He's attacking with melee, no prayer is required here and you should attack him with mage, green or range form. He's attacking with ranged you should pray range and attack him with mage. Blue or mage form. He's attacking with mage, you should pray mage and attack him with ranged. There's also one more special phase where he'll combine both ranged and magic attacks and that's marked with a half blue half green dot in the plugin. So Zura ascended back in his green form which means we're going to pray range and stay in our mage setup. Now is a good time to click the current phase on the Zura plugin. You'll also notice that there's a prayer icon next to each phase in the plugin so you know in advance what to pray against. After we clicked on our current phase in the plugin, the rest of the fight is already determined and you immediately know all his phases, how to pray against them and where to stand. There are 3 different pets in total and with enough practice you'll notice the advantages of each and every one of them. For example, since we're dealing most of our damage with magic, we want as many green phases as we can get. Okay, we're 
we're in the green phase where we're attacking with mage and praying against range. According to the plugin, our next phase is going to be a no prey red phase and we need to move to the other side of the area. So we're going to do that after the venomous clouds start disappearing. Obviously, you can attack him while running towards your destination. While Zulra is in his melee phase, he'll face towards you and all you need to do is step away to a tile on the side like so. These necklings kill themselves on your ring of recoil. Just fully ignore them. Don't forget to click on your plugin just so you don't lose track of where you are. As we can see, in the next phase, Zulra will go into his blue form which means you're going to switch to your range setup and pray against mate. You're also going to stand on the mark tile which is also shown in the Zulra plugin as an X marker. Turn on your range damage boost, mark your tracker and stand on the tile. You can do this in any order but the most important thing is to correct pray so you don't die. Zulra is once again descending and ascending in his green form. You're praying ranged and swapping to our mage setup. Keep an eye on your prayer and HP values. Our next phase is going to be blue which means we're praying against mage and attacking him with range. Keep track of your phases. As you can already tell this is the gist of the whole fight. Just keep track of the phases in the tracker and you'll always know what to pray against, where to stand and which gear to switch to. Even after 100 kills I sometimes forget and confuse myself as in which phase I'm currently in but it's not the end of the world. You die, you regear and you go back in. There's only one tricky phase in the whole fight and that's the half blue half green phase or sometimes it's half green half blue depends on the pet you get in the beginning. As we can see the phase shows both mage and range prayer icons but since the mage one is on the left side it means that we're going to pray mage first then range. As you can see Zulra is now green so we're going to attack him with mage. Let's play this out and then revert it back. The moment Zulra attacks with mage you can switch your prayer to ranged. I was kind of confused on the timings at first but that's how you should do it. The damage is counted as soon as he spits the ball not when it hits you so you should always pray in advance. If by any chance you take a huge amount of damage don't panic this is why we brought combo food. After the last phase Zulra will reset back into his original green phase but this time he'll attack you with ranged instead of being passive like in the beginning. Everything else remains the same. As you can see if he had a little bit more HP he would ascend into his blue phase and continue the fight normally. It's a really rewarding fight in terms of mechanics and if you give it a few tries I'm sure you'll be grinding GP in no time. In the end I was managing to get 2 kills per trip which I think is pretty decent considering these stats and gear. Like I said in the beginning Zora has some RNG phases where he'll attack you with unblockable attacks and there's literally nothing that you can do about it. It's not your fault, it's not a skill issue, that's just the way it is. Unfortunately the luck was not on my side during the first 100 Zora kills and I only managed to snag around 9 mil worth of loot. But even so this was one of the most fun fights and grinds I've had in RuneScape and I don't regret it for a minute. Let me know in the comments below how your first 100 Zulra kills went and for the time being check out my other beginner guides on the channel and as always thanks for watching and have a good one.